Greetings everyone, welcome back to the bench. Today we have a disco bulb. A very interesting failure mode. It sends three flashes, a dead space, and more flashes. Maybe it's become sentient, it's trying to send data to its home world. That would be Home Depot because they're the ones who make eco, well, at least sell eco smart bulbs. So yeah, this bulb came from my parents' house. My dad asked me to change it. He said it was starting to flicker. So I changed it out from the ceiling fixture. Brought it home here. Yeah, this is kind of an odd failure mode. I've never seen one do this before. A regular three-beat pattern there. I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear it clicking. What would be the problem here? Uh, I'm kind of thinking there's like an auxiliary power circuit to the driver chip that has its own little supply. And if the capacitor goes bad in that circuit, you'll get weird stuff like that. So I'm going to guess that that's what the failure mode is. So let's tear this bulb down and see what's going on inside. Okay, we're in. Almost had to destroy the thing to get it open. Very, very difficult to pry that cover off. But anyway, pretty unusual design. It's got an optical guide here to aim some of the light to the sides because these snow cone style LED bulbs, they uh, tend to shoot a lot of the light upward and not enough to the sides and down. But anyway, let me disassemble this thing more and see what's going on. Now you can see how this bulb is suffering the effects from heat. This little light guide optic thing here, it just crumbled to bits. It's kind of brittle. And look at these capacitors. The shrink wrap covering is cracked on both of them. It's cracked open. The board's discolored. And I can't get measurements off these capacitors. Meter won't give me a reading. When they're in circuit, there's other devices in parallel that might uh, prevent the meter from getting a reading. But I did find that this capacitor is wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, it's loose. The uh, I think the trace lifted on the board. But that might be that capacitor. It's usually an auxiliary supply for these driver chips. And uh, that capacitor, if it's not working or it's failed in some way, it uh, prevents the thing from starting properly. So, let's see if I can uh, get that capacitor out of there and maybe pop something in there to see if it'll work again. Okay, let's see what this thing has to say about this capacitor. So, it's a little low. ESR seems to be high as well as V loss. So maybe it is a little weak. I still don't think that would prevent it from working. I'm just wondering if maybe it had a bad connection since it was loose. Okay, as you can see, that did not fix it. I put the capacitor back in there and hooked it up to power. Same thing. So I touched a known good capacitor across this capacitor on the back side and it slows the pulsing down a bit but it doesn't change it that just goes to show you just because you see one problem on the board doesn't mean that is the actual cause so i have to check a few other things but i have my radio shack speaker amplifier in this uh, pickup coil you can hear it
Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, overloaded. It's having problems starting. You can even hear it from the coil. But I'll check that as well. Okay, folks, I have determined that there is nothing wrong with this driver. And let me explain. So, I hooked the driver's output to this 25-watt bulb. That, you know, this puts out around 60 volts. It should light the bulb up dimly and not overload the driver. So let me turn it on. I have that uh, speaker amplifier thing going and you can see that it's working just fine. So now let me put in a heavier load, a 60 watt bulb, and we'll see what it does. There it is. Hear it? It's doing that triple restart thing where it puts power into it three times and apparently if it's overloaded it shuts down for a bit and then it tries again and just repeats. So that must be its uh, design for dealing with overloads. Well I didn't observe all angles of this thing and I hooked this LED up to my power supply and there are two LEDs that are out so they must be shorted and that lowers the voltage enough so it must depend a lot on voltage I think it would be constant current but apparently if the voltage is too low it overloads this driver and that's what it was doing because of those two dead LEDs there. Well, that was fun. I like uh, tinkering with these things and figuring out what's wrong with them. Or what's not wrong with them, I guess. And, uh, yeah, not much more to say here. See you in the next video, and thanks for watching.